The waiver wire is not hot this week. It is rather disgusting. Just like last week, there are not many players to really go after. And we really got to pick our shots and hope for the best here. And hopefully something turns out. Today we're looking at 10 running backs who are sitting on waivers. Who could possibly go up in value? Who could do something for us? Give us some fancy production. Go off. Be a stash. Whatever we want for them. We're going to decide whether or not we need those running backs. But before we do, you need to click that subscribe button right now. Stop missing out on the deep dives on these players. We'll have more deep dives on some of these players we're going to talk about today. We're going to go over more information. We're also going to help you set those lineups. Cover the waiver wire extensively. Multiple videos going deeper and deeper throughout the week. And we help you win those trades to help you win your league. But let's dig in. Let's look at the waiver wire. And here we go. First things first. I really want to really shine the flashlight on this. Keaton Mitchell. Big time waiver wire get this week because there really isn't many waiver wire gets. But the thing is, he's an ultimate stash play right now. He has some goods to his game. He made it to the 53-man roster, has been on IR, is going to be back very soon. We'll get the news, and I'll give the update once it happens, and I'll have a video up on that. 437 speed. And we have a backfield here full of jabronis here. Gus Edwards not getting it done. Justice Hill's not really doing much. We got Melvin Gordon hanging around. This backfield has an ambiguous nature. There's some opportunity here. If he gets some touches, if he really becomes the hot hand, he could take this job. This job is up for the taking right now. Nobody's running away with it. Everyone's just ho-hum, lunch paling it, trying to get by week to week. And there's some opportunity in this offense for a running back to take the ball and go home. That does not mean it's going to happen. This is why it's called a lottery ticket. A lottery ticket, most of the time they're laying on the ground like trash and fodder. But there's always one that hits and goes to the moon. And we're hoping Keaton Mitchell goes to the moon here. And that's what we're looking at him for the waiver wire here. He is the running back lottery ticket of the week right now. There's always lottery tickets on the waiver wire. We're just playing hot potato with them off and on throughout the season. But right now, we see the opportunity. We can see where it could happen for him. It's probably going to start off slow because you know how coaches do. But you're really going to have to wait this one out. We cover the schedule. Starting off, probably not going to be the grandest thing. You might have some opportunity. But still. But still. What else are you going to do with this waiver wire? We're going to find out real quick here because we're looking at Samaj P. Ryan. You know how ugly it is when you're seeing that Samaj P. Ryan face looking back at you. And he wasn't great last week. Even when Javante Williams was out, 42% snapshot on the season, 66 rushing yards on the season, and people are talking about him on the waiver wire. And just because they're on this list doesn't mean they're endorsement. I got to talk about everybody because you know what? I might be wrong. You might like something else, or you see something you want to go after, and you do you. 13.5 routes per game, 45.8% route participation rate. So every time they're dropping back, he's on 45.8% of those routes ran. 6.8 fancy points per game. So what can we say about Samaj P. Ryan? How can he help you out? This Denver team, they're not very volume-esque in the run game. They want to. They can't. They can't stay in a neutral game script for them to go heavy in the run game. The thing about this, though, he's a dependable running back. He was brought in to be the dependable guy, the pass blocker, the guy to hold it down between the tackles, very ho-hum, a running back who's still going to get touches. He's still going to get some opportunity. You're hoping he crosses the goal line, maybe get spammed on a couple targets in that matchup, but ultimately, you're not picking him up to win your league. He's not going to be a league winner. He could get you by if you're lucky. You put him in your lineup and close your eyes. I don't know if you want that or not. But that's really what Samaj P. Ryan's going to be while Javante Williams is out. Speaking of him being out, they're saying that he's day-to-day. -day. The thing about that, that's very ambiguous because sometimes day-to-day -day really means week-to-week. -week. You're going to have to monitor him because the news doesn't make sense right now. It's foggy. We'll get more as the days go on. That being said... Jaleel McLaughlin, McLovin, that's what I'm going to call him because I can. 
104 total yards against the Bears. 19 fantasy points. Looked good. The younger back coming in here, getting some juice. The coaching staff talking him up. Whatever that means, though. I don't trust coaches. I don't listen to coaches. 451 speed. So we got a little bit more pop than P Ryan. The upside here is a little bit more grand because we have that pop off the step. He's getting targets, even though it's one sample. Sample of one. The Broncos are still going to be the Broncos. But if I'm shooting on a running back between the two, I'd rather just shoot for the moon and see what happens. Jaleel McLaughlin, a little bit more unknown. A little bit more unknown. That's what I like about that. Usually the players that break out, they're usually in years one and two, maybe early year three. That's when it starts to happen. It's rare that a guy breaks out and becomes a league winner really late in their career. Maybe we catch a breakout. Remember, Javante Williams is going to eventually be back. Maybe he can be the patch-up guy for you going forward. But you're going to have to shoot your shot. I'd rather shoot for the upside, see what happens. That way, if I miss, I'm missing big. That being said, Zach Charbonnet, snaps increasing, getting opportunity. But I'm looking at him more of a handcuff than a 1B option. So if something happens to Kenneth Walker, we know he's going to be getting touches. He's going to be getting opportunity. Second-round draft pick. Had good production coming out of college. First running back ever at Michigan to have double-digit touchdowns. That's a good thing to have in his prospect profile because he went right to UCLA, transferred there, was instantly productive, stayed another year, and really improved his pass catching stats there. So a lot of good things. Bigger running back can catch passes out of the backfield. Again, you're just waiting for him to get his opportunity because we know running backs are up and down with the injuries, and you always want the next man up in a team that can move the football. Next, Derrick Henry handcuffed with Tajay Spears. We talk about him a lot. Everyone talks about him a lot. And the thing is, he's getting a lot of snaps. Even when Derrick Henry goes off, he's still getting a lot of snaps. He had a 53% snap share. And it's been like that all season long. So that being said, if something happens to Henry, he's getting touches. And the thing is, last year, we were looking at the handcuff at Henry and we we're like, hey, if you need somebody, you got a spot, and you don't want to run to waivers if it does happen, just get the handcuff to Henry. We got Tajay Spears. He's not a 1B option yet, but you can see where he could get some opportunity. And he's going to have a splash game predicting that. That's going to be a hard thing to do, but you're getting a 29.3% opportunity share. He's getting opportunities. He's getting a chance to prove himself 11 routes per game, which is pretty major in an offense that is not potent in the passing attack. He's got a 45.5% route participation rate. That's pretty good for a running back. So there's some good things. He's explosive. Good between the tackles for size. Good vision, that's why. Very good vision and moves laterally well with good pop and catches the ball very well out of the backfield. Now we're looking at Latavius Murray. We're not saying he's going to be great. We're not saying anything like that. But we're saying we want a piece of the Bills offense. We want a handcuff. Cook has been looking good. He's been getting touches. But we know running backs do running back things, and that means they get hurt often. So what if? What if? And you got a spot... You look at the waiver wire, there's nothing there like we said. It's trash. It's trash. And it's Latavius Murray. And he is getting a 25.6% snap share on the season. 20.2 opportunity share. Not too bad. He's a touchdown gamble. He is crossing the goal line some of these games. He's a handcuff because we can see the workload increasing. Damian Harris was supposed to have this role. We looked at him on the depth chart, Latavius Murray, and we're like, hey, this guy's going to cause some problems. He might be a thorn in our side, but now we're looking at him. Good handcuff here because he's got size. Size is just athleticism from back in the day, I'll say that, but really dependable. So if something happens, you got the Bills offense to fuel him. Is he a must-get? No, no. But if you're looking to get something, maybe you want this. Now it's Deuce Vaughn. Notice I kept the picture small because that's how it should roll when you're five foot six. Rico Dowdle got a hip contusion. Might be out some time, day to day, week to week. We'll have to see. He's going to see some receiving volume. He'll be next man up. Something happens to Pollard more than likely. And he could be seeing some opportunity. Is he a must get off the waiver wire? No. Is he a must watch? I mean, he should be a guy to pay attention to, but you don't have to really. But there could be a, a chance that he provides some production, some opportunity, gets some touches here and there. 
with the added role, the added chance to do something to prove himself. But let's see what happens with Deuce Vaughn. Next, Tuba Hubbard. Miles Sanders is dealing with a groin injury. He's trying to play with it. Tuba Hubbard, 54% of the snaps and 16 touches last week. Didn't do much with it, though. Did do much with it, though. But he's been trending with snap share. He's been trending with opportunity share. We're just waiting for things to be put together. And there could be a time where Sanders is out. He's been injured often throughout his career. And you get Hubbard as a back-end piece on your depth chart, and he's also rostered in a lot of leagues, so it really depends if he's available or not. Jeff Wilson should be back soon. Devin A. Chain's the guy. He'll be the guy forever, at least till the rookie contract expires. Probably a little longer than that. But Wilson, the thing about him being back and coming back soon is you want a piece of the Dolphins' offense. They hung 70 on a team. They hung 70 on the team. I don't need to go in advanced metrics. Anybody on that field running routes, taking snaps, you kind of want a piece of that, at least on the back end of your roster. You don't need to be starting him. You don't need to have high hopes. Kind of want a piece of that, and you see how dirty this waiver wire is. Why not? I mean, who cares? This waiver wire sucks. Now we're looking at Rashawn Johnson. Stash and pray. Should be rostered. Should be rostered. But I'm seeing him on a lot of waiver wire articles, and if I don't mention him, he'll get asked about. He'll get asked about. That's the thing. I'm assuming he should be rostered. I'm assuming he should be on a team. But if I don't mention him, he'll get asked about. But again, he's a stash and pray. Six touches in week four. But we know he's being used in the passing game. We got pop in the stat. But still, the Bears are the Bears. Let's just say that. The Bears are the Bears. We don't know what's going to happen here. No one's going to predict the Bears. We're going to predict ugliness, if anything. But Rashawn Johnson, that being said, maybe he can jump out the mud here and do something because he does have that upside. He was drafted as the first running back taken on day three of this year's draft. Does have good size and just athleticism. That's some stuff you want to know here. Khalil Herbert, though, he's not going away until something happens to him. And you know what? Something happens to running back. So you got a good 1B slash handcuff, whatever you want to call him here. Kendra Miller, I'll throw him up there. Another stash you want. Should be rostered or held, but hard right now in 12-team leagues when you see Kamara coming back. But again, lottery tickets. You got to have one of them. You got to have a lottery ticket, and you got to be willing to die or play hot potato with that lottery ticket. With that being said, if that ticket doesn't hit, you just get the next one and just hope because we're trying to find a league winner. We're not trying to find a guy that just sits there on a bench, gets 10 points a game. We feel good about it because we know it's not a bad player. We want that player to either face plant really quick or we want that player to go to the moon. Because if that player goes to the moon, it's going to turn things around for you real quick. Especially if you're a middle-of-the-road team. That's the strategy. If you're just looking for 10, 11, 12 points per game, you know what? You got a guy to put in your lineup. But you got that extra spot there, that spot you carved out. You might as well play the lottery, see if any of these young guys can hit for you. Like a Devin A-Chain. That was the reason why we had that spot open for those young running backs and wide receivers. Probably shouldn't be too many left on the season. Maybe somebody pops off in the back half, the back nine. But honestly, you still got to be stashing and praying on a lot of these players. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I want to hear about it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button on the way out. Catch you on the next video.